Hey, everybody. <laughs> How are you doing? Um, thank you so much for your patience as we uh, get started here. But my name is Annabelle. I am the Director of Digital Experiences at Geek Girl Con and an honorary member of the Twitch team. And for Anime Month, um, we had the opportunity to showcase a little bit about Gunpla and the Gunpla building hobby. And I'd love to introduce my friend, Will, and he can tell us a little bit about himself. I am Will. Uh, I am a cosplay and costume and prop maker um, at Shonok Studios. It's my shirt. Um, yeah, and uh, I also like doing model building. So we're going to do some of that tonight and talk a little bit about the hobby and how to do it. Do you want to give any plugs or where people can find you or they want to follow you oh, while they're watching us? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're basically at Shonok Studios on all the social media but it's not spelled the way it sounds. It's and I'll type it in chat too, so people can find it. <laughs> yeah, I got your back. Yeah, I'm in there too. Um, <clears throat> but it's S I O N N A C H Studios. But we're on everything: um, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, all that good stuff. And you all have like um, Donkey Girl Con before, right? Like as vendors. Um, gosh. I think you no, did the online actually, one, right? We, we did the online one, yeah, and we were going to apply uh, the year that the pandemic happened, because that was the year that we were starting to vend at cons. We had done our very first vending at a con ever, just right before the pandemic started, and then we were like, well, there goes those plans. Pandemic ruins everything! <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why I really like um, what the Geek Girl Con Twitch team has done, just bringing out cool panel content. And one of the initiatives this year, you know, especially we're not sure how Omicron is going to go, um, but they came up with this awesome idea of having like themed months. And for anime month, I think at the, uh, the last uh, planning session when we were thinking about anime month, I was like, well, if we need any last minute ideas, um, <laughs> I know a guy who does Gundams and he's amazing. Uh, if yeah. In case, you know, we're allowed to have dudes on Geek Girl Con and we are. So spoiler alert. <laughs> I am very honored to be on. I think Taryn said you were the first honorary dude on the Twitch, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's cool. That's, like I said, I'm totally honored. That um, is so cool. Yeah. And you have a daughter, too, which is the extra awesomeness of it. I do have a daughter. She's awesome. <laughs> she oh. she will definitely be going to Gig Girl Con next time we get to have one in real life. Fingers crossed. Yeah. If there's any news on that, I'll definitely, we'll let everybody yeah, know. No, she, she especially loves um, the, uh, the science area. Like we spent, because both of the kids have been to Geek Girl Con several times, but she like loves the science area. I think, I think a big part of it is because like the, the standee and everything like the, on, on the science area is the, like the black girl with the puffs, which looks like her, right? Aww. So that uh, the representation helps reinforce, like, this is a cool area for me to go hang out in. Um, I'm going to clip this for the science team to be like, you doing your awesome work. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, like, we, like, they didn't want to leave the, like, that we were, like, there all day long, pretty much doing, like, going to all the different, like, areas and doing all the science experiments. They love it. Oh, that's so they cool. I don't get to do that at any other cons either, so. I'm told this is totally they didn't pay me to say any of this stuff or anything it's just, <laughs> I really I honestly this is all honest uh, well it's great because it's, it's especially now that I'm like on the marketing team I'm like how do people find out about Geek Girl Con what chairs do they gravitate towards so it's really cool to see different members of the community I mean especially a guy get the value out of um, what's out there and other cons too because I know as a segue into the Gundam building and I got the kit that Will brought me over here um that I was able to, at SafgarCon, attend a model building session. And it was an awesome room you had over there. And if you want to yeah, tell us a little yeah. bit about it and kind of how <clears throat> you're able to expand Gundam building in the community or Gunpla building. Yeah, so um, so I'm also the Mecha modeling coordinator for SakuraCon, um, which basically I'm in charge of. We have a room there that um, anybody can come and uh, we have kits in the room that are free of charge it's included part of of the membership for the con but anybody can come and you can grab a kit and sit in the room and build it um and uh you know get advice and tips and we also do like little like workshoppy panels in the room while people are building so like you can listen to people talking about like more advanced techniques and things while you're building a kit yourself 
Um, and you know, you can we have tools and a bunch of stuff in the room. So you just come and hang out. Yep, nippers and um, we'll have like we have like some markers and stuff if you want to add like little details and stuff. But so yeah, cool. so and so we did that. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll be doing it again this year. Um, and if everything goes smoothly, I'll have a bigger room so we can have people more spaced out. And um, so there's more, you know, social distancing, but people can still be in the room. We'll require masks and everything in the room while you're building. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so that'll be nice to actually be able to have people in a room doing that and, and helping people get into the into the hobby. Like you said, you you came in. I remember you came in. I was like, here, try one. You're like, ah, I don't know. But then you did it and you really had a good time. So usually everybody who comes in like that are, are newbies, they always enjoy it. And like wanna, they're like, oh, I'm gonna go do more. I've had like so many people like go out to the con floor, buy something else and then come back and be like, oh, look what I bought. Cause I had so much fun in here. And it's just really cool. Like having that feedback of that you're actually have gotten somebody interested in something that they would have never thought about it before. Yeah, like it's intimidating. I it's because I don't know why people can look like at a regular puzzle. I'm like, oh, I can just put a puzzle together and make it look like a painting. And then they see this <laughs> 3D thing with all these little pieces. I'm going to open mine right now and just like demonstrate. But like as a newbie walking in, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, where do I start? Right. Like there's all these little pieces everywhere. And I think I, I, it might affect other geeks too, but um, the fear of failure or wanting to try and like ruin the model or waste your time. Or like, I feel like people like... Um, uh, doubt themselves out of trying new experiences like that. And that's right. why the, the Gundam room was especially awesome because you had like the free kits and th there was no, there was no excuse when you get somebody, somebody something free, like, Hey, it's free. Just give it a go. Right. And yeah. You, you don't, you're not out anything if you end up not liking it or doesn't work out what you wanted it to or whatever. So. And especially like if anybody's watching this and they're interested in getting one, like these aren't even um, too expensive. Right. I mean, I've seen like, no. there's like a Gundam shop, um, in, in the international district yeah there's yeah, one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's right off the right out right next to the uh, train station light rail station um and then there's like you can get them at like hobby town and stuff too but but that shop in international district is like that's all they have and like all kinds of slides and the owner there is actually really cool like he'll he'll talk to you about techniques and like what paints and like he's he's a really nice guy and he'll like talk to you talk your ear off about whatever you want and let you chat with them and stuff so that's so cool. Well, I'm going to treat this like uh, the model building room. So somebody walks in, <laughs> doesn't know what to do. I've got my kit, but I'm curious about the types of kits out there. And I know yeah. you have some shiny examples to walk us through. Stuff. Yeah. So, so what Annabelle has and what I'm going to build too is, is an SD kit, which are kind of like the smallest ones. They, even though for the, even even though they're the smallest ones and for the most part, the most basic, they do have even bigger SD kits that have like, that can like transform or like other stuff that are bigger than these ones. These ones are pretty small. And a lot of the ones that we have in the Gundam room are this size. Um, and yeah, they, depending on like, there are some that are like more basic and some that are more rare, but like for most of the average SD kits, you're looking at maybe like 10 to $20 to, for a kit, like if you go to the shop. So even, even to buy one, you're not spending a ton of money. Um, yeah, so the SD kits are kind of like the lowest end. Um, and then the next level up is the, uh, oh, where is it? Oh, it's down over here. The HG kits, which are one 144th scale. Um, they're a lot more complex and posable and they're like normal proportions. That's the other thing is the SD kits are all like the chibi style um, ones. I love the art on them too. It's just like so right? dramatic and <laughs> <laughs> and then master grade is the next scale up, which is one 100th scale. And these are usually much bigger boxes. This, uh, this one isn't even that big of, a, of an MG kit, um, but you get a lot more detail and pieces, a lot more detail and movement um and then the scale up from that is perfect grade which is 1 60th scale and they come in giant boxes but they're they end up being like this big this is a, a custom one that i did a few years ago but like down to the level of the cpcs like they fully posable fingers even on like this scale of kids oh my god and like with um like little hydraulics that actually move in their joints and stuff like that oh it's a little blurry there we go um, but yeah, so they get they get up to pretty um, complex 
And then the other thing I wanted to mention too, I know we're talking kind of specifically about Gunpla, but if you don't necessarily like, you know, Gundam or don't know anything about Gundam, there are lots of other kits you can get too from other fandoms. So like, um, there's a whole line of Transformers model kits. If you like Transformers, there's um, like figure model kits. This is Wonder this Woman. Um, Wonder Woman one that I got for Heather for her birthday last year that she built. Um, but yes, yeah, so they have like figure ones, like you can get superheroes, um, their Star Wars stuff, like Poe's X-Wing. Nice. Yeah, I've seen the, um, the Star Wars ones at Con, and is, is it just like typical model kits, or yeah, is the Gunpla ones have, different? Like, is there a different... They're, they're pretty much the same. I mean, like, if you open one of these and dumped it out on the table, it looks, you know, it doesn't look any different than what you'd have in your hand really right so i mean it's the the skills and the technique are all pretty much the same um so really it's it's whatever fandom you like and with the star wars ones they have both like vehicles and figures too so like they have like a kylo ren and darth vader that i've seen recently and a bunch of stuff so you know there's all kinds of other kits besides just gundam um if you want to get into modeling but maybe you don't like big robots there's lots of other options too there's they even have like a bunch of pokemon model kits <laughs> Nice. But those ones are really easy because you know it's like a couple of body pieces and a big shell because they're big and round and roly poly and stuff. Do you have any favorite online places in case people are like, oh, I want to look at the gun um, ones, I want to look at like the superhero ones, like where yeah, Um oh gosh, I'm gonna let me hold on. Oh, you're fine. I just wanna before I say the name, I want to make sure I got it right. Because there's a uh it's usagundamstore.com is um the one that i've been using most recently it's a small business um so i like to support small businesses when i can because i'm a small business um and so like every time i like the first time i ordered from them i i had just like randomly found it on google but like i got like the the owner actually like sends out like a personal email saying hey thank you for supporting my small business Aww. and like I thought at first I was like well maybe it's just like an auto thing but then the next time I ordered he was like oh I really appreciate it especially being a repeat customer like so he like he is literally I, I was like okay it's definitely like an actual personal response so um yeah that place is pretty cool you gotta friend him and be like hey dude we're friends now <laughs> I'm just scrolling through and I'm like, there's way more um, like human figures than I was expecting. And that's really cool. Oh yeah, there's, there's, a, a, and again, it's mostly, you know, which is probably what you would assume, but mostly it's, there's the, the majority of the figures are anime, um, but there are stuff like the Star Wars ones and, and some other ones. Um, but um, like, even like that Wonder Woman kit, which is like very anime style Wonder Woman, they have things like that, where it's kind of a, a crossover between in anime style and non-anime characters so it's pretty cool cool now you got me all excited to start building so <laughs> if there's something else you want to second to or <laughs> no no i think i'm good i want I, yeah this is i feel like we need some lo-fi beats as we just kind of zone out and start working and then move this down let's ignore my mess nope. okay i gotta turn it upside down i'm doing right. a uh so this one this one is like a little bit more like a step up like technology wise from yours there's this specific line that they have that um it kind of bridges the gap between sd kits and like the next level up is they have these cross silhouette is what they call it i don't know if you get if this will be on able to be seen but basically you can build it kind of like the more chibi style like the one that you have mm -hmm. but it has this internal frame that you can swap out that is more like normal proportions Oh, wait, so, so you can you still, choose between building either of those? Yeah, so you basically uh, decide which frame you want to build it on if you want it to be the more chibi style or slightly more accurate proportions. But it's, since it still uses most of the same pieces, it's still like chibi style, but like a little bit more close, a little closer to like the normal proportions. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I think another thing I was worried about is that like, oh, it's all in Japanese. How am I going to do this? But it's really visual as you go through it. I like holding yeah, the they... camera. But... Yeah. They put a lot of effort into making it visual, not just because of the language, I think, but also just because it being visual means that like my 
um, my son who's eight now, but he's been doing Gundam for a few years. And, and I think, yeah, just making sure that the instructions are really easy to follow visually without having to necessarily read anything. Every once in a while, there'll be like a weird thing where it has like a specific, like push this in until it clicks, which, you know, maybe you don't know that if you didn't read what it said, but for the most part, it's, it's very visual and easy to follow for, for just about all ages. And I'm going to have to remind myself to keep talking because I remember last time, oh my God, like in the before times when we could go to cons in person, when I built this in the, the model room, like I was zoned out zoned out, <laughs> and I like blinked awake and I was like, oh my God, I finished this thing. So I feel like it's going to happen again. Have you built any recently or have I like stolen you away from um, life to like take the time to do a kit? <laughs> um, so we actually... I'm going to open these bags real quick because they're probably, I don't know how loud it is opening the bags. So I'm going to do that before I talk oh, yeah. about anything important. <laughs> so I don't have these. paper crink, pa plastic crinkling noises. Put those over there. Okay. Um, so there's actually, uh, last year, they came out with a new perfect grade kit. So this, the size of this guy. Mm -hmm. um, so, and actually here to put it in scale so you can actually see the difference. So this is the head, let's see if I can get this on camera. So that's the head of this guy. Uh, I can't put it next to him in relation Oh, I see. To oh my God, it's so like, tiny so, in comparison. He's like a baby. Um, but, so, but they just came out with this new kit that's called like the perfect grade unleashed, which is, so it's this size, but the way that it it's this whole new, they put a whole lot of new technology into it. So it has like this whole internal frame that you build first that is super posable. So you can get all different kinds of poses. And then it actually has like really small, thin, um, like metal pieces that are actually metal that for like vents and stuff so that they, they're real metal. Um, and then you put on like, and then it has like the, the kind of the armored shell pieces go over that. So it, it's, it's a lot more realistic in the way that even it's built. So like you can take off the armor and it still looks like not just like a blob of plastic under there, but like realistic electronics and machinery. Um, oh. And uh, so that came out last year and I got that as like a, um, as a family project, but really it's our 13 year old son and our eight year old son who like doing uh, Gunpla also. And so it was kind of to be like a, a family project where like so the three of us can actually like hey we're gonna sit down and like work on this together as like a family project um like and Legos build or something. up to it like yeah cool. and so the nice thing um because of the because it's so big and it's all it's all split out we basically we've probably worked on it it's been a couple of months since we've sat down and worked on it but we have the frame torso and the legs and that's it so far after like working on it for like that's how many parts and like little pieces there are oh my gosh so like yeah we have sitting on the shelf downstairs is like this this internal torso and legs and that's it we haven't even gotten to the arms i think the arms are next <laughs> <laughs> man sometimes if you guys see me do this a lot it's because some of the the letters is really tiny and i'm like man i feel like i'm getting really old i'm like what is it say? oh gosh yeah so one of the nice things um that is fairly more recent to um gunpla is like having stuff where it's like all molded in the right colors like it used to be that everything would be like one color so you had to like paint it or do stuff but a lot, pretty much all the kits now, everything is molded in the appropriate colors, and then it'll come with like some stickers like these. So you don't have um, to paint everything so that you can, You don't have yeah. to paint anything if you don't want to. Um, I know really that there's like weathering and... pens and stuff, just like simply yeah. add a little bit of detail, but. Uh oh, where did I put my tools? Oh, and let me show people. I started using the clippers, and you just <clears> use those on the little joints to like pop it out. Like you see how easy that came out. And yeah, you just take those there and you go clip when you're ready. Yeah, and so really, like, this is the only, <laughs> oh, and but this is, this is, I was gonna say, this is the only tool that, like, I recommend is, like, the bare minimum that you have, and these, like, these ones are just, like, the cheap ones that are, like, eight bucks. Um, you can get into other tools for more, more detailed things if you enjoy it and you want to get into it, but I would recommend at the bare minimum having at least these. They have ones that are, like, way more expensive. They have, like, there's this brand called God Hands. 
which is a funny name, but like, <laughs> and like, so at one of the, at one of the, when you're at one of the rooms, somebody had brought theirs with them and they were like, oh, here, try these out. And I was like, how can they really be worth like 50 bucks for these little clippers? They are so nice. Oh my gosh. Oh, Not cool. enough for me to actually buy them, but like, it's amazing that you can make something that is in theory so simple, just like little nippers and make the quality that much better that it's that noticeable. Like it's I was like, like makeup brushes. Away. Like I'll be like, you know, the twelve dollar makeup brush that will do the work for me. But I've felt like the eighty dollar ones, and I'm like, it's just different enough that it's like on a splurge, I would do it. But in the meantime, like the affordable ones, you know, I can I can deal with it. I can work with it. Um, looking at the, I just noticed there's stuff in the chat. Um, I agree. Uh, Everybody should like big robots, but uh, generic wire cutters also work. The the main difference with like the nippers is that um, they usually have like a flat back, which wire cutters usually, even though one side is flatter, it'll have like the blade is kind of angled. Um, and so when you go to cut these off, the the biggest thing is being flat on the back means that when you like cut a piece like this, which I, I'm not even looking at the instructions, so I probably shouldn't be cutting pieces <laughs> off. I've not actually started. But so when you cut the piece, it cuts the end off. With regular wire cutters, what you'll usually get is you'll have like a little nub left over, which isn't a big deal because um, that leads into what I was going to say is the in. other the uh, other tools zoom. that I recommend at like kind of the next step would be an exacto knife of some sort is good because if you do have any of those left off it makes it easy to kind of just like scrape it off if it's small enough um or uh sanding things of some sort um one of my favorite sanding tools are these sanding sticks they come in like a bag of like 20 or 30 and they're basically they're like they're, they, they look like someone like chopped up an emery board because they're like spongy in the middle um but like in a given pack, there's like a random assortment of sandpaper grits. And like there, there's two different grits on each side and like some of them will be coarse, but so you can also just sand off the nub if you have a little bit of a nub or with sandpaper or anything, but the sticks are, are like my favorite for sanding stuff. Nice. Um, I should look at the first step of mine. Okay. You're fine. I'm like careful. I'm, I'm so afraid <laughs> to like um, face it the wrong way and snap on the piece the wrong way. I'm like, how am I going to undo this? But I'm like, I can always yell at Alan if I need him to come in and rip something apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they do have, it's, it, you know, the the, the longer um, the hobby is out there, the more they come up with like specialized tools. So they actually have a tool that's for like taking pieces back apart that get. Really? Because, like, you know, usually if you have two pieces stuck together, my go-to is always to take an X-Acto knife and kind of like wedge it in there and like pry it apart. But yeah. it, you have a blade on it. So like you, in theory, might like cut into your plastic or like cut a piece off or whatever. So they have like these little, it's almost like, you know, like the Lego has the Lego part remover and now they have <laughs> Gunpla part removers. Yeah. All these little very specific tools. Yeah, I'm, part of me gets panicky, but it's like once I position the pieces and I see the little slots, like it's just, once you get there, it's intuitive. I'm like, oh, okay, this definitely fits here. There's nowhere else to fit at least in this step. Yeah, every once in a while, there are definitely parts where like you can put them together different ways. And if it's kind of like with building, like you mentioned, you know, it seems that Lego has the same thing where like you might not notice until you're like several steps down that like, oh, I put that piece in backwards and now this thing doesn't fit <laughs> and I have to go like backtrack to where I can correct it. Um, I had a dream. But, I got the Millennium Falcon Lego and I did exactly that. Like I spent like <laughs> 50 hours on it and then it was half built wrong. And I'm like, no, that would not be good. <laughs> Sorry. What are you I saying? It's huge. Oh, no. I was just saying that would not be good. The thing is huge. So like, yeah, yeah that would. <laughs> I saw a guy do a speed build and he actually had, you saw him in the video having to undo a piece of it. And he just like kept it in the the what do you call those speed sped up videos speed bill i don't like know like the yeah i know what you mean though yeah i could just feel this frustration like no i see it took stuff apart <laughs> there's uh yeah there's there's one it's actually that bumblebee model kit that i showed a second ago i did that on a stream and then like uploaded the video and there's one piece on that model kit that was the biggest pain and um 
that's the only comment I think that I've gotten on that video multiple, multiple times. People are like, how did you get that part in? I can't get it in. No. Like, so like, re like realizing that everybody else also has that same exact problem, like made me feel better. But then they're also, I, I imagine that most of the people were watching the video and commented because they were trying to figure it out. And they're like, oh, here's a video of someone who did it. And they watched the video. And it's like, see, it's. <laughs> Yeah, it's not us. They also, it's like when you like Google answer or something and, and you're like, uh, everybody has the same issue and nobody knows how to fix it. It's just a thing. Yeah, it's it's like not being able to fix a problem sucks, but when everybody else also has the same problem, it's not, doesn't make you feel quite as bad about it. It's a solidarity or like hitting a game bug or something. God, I love all these little pieces. His little face. Twenty. Mine starts with the body. And I started with the head. This is where we put the lo-fi beats on. Bum, bum, bum. Is that in post? Oh wait, no, this is live. Stream. Right. <laughs> this is where we like put our cell phone on a, a YouTube channel that'll play it for two hours. All right. So one other thing that is like a big difference between um, the levels of kits is usually like the SD kits come with like these little sticker sheets. Um, they're all stick on stickers. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times they'll have ones. Um, mine doesn't really, mine doesn't have, mine has like these stripes though. So like instead of having to paint those stripes on a particular piece, there's like stickers or there'll be pieces that like that what to, where the sticker makes it look metallic or something where it's not. Um, but on the bigger kits, sometimes you'll have um, like dry rub transfers in addition to regular stickers and mm -hmm. um, and water slide decals. So it can get, um, there are lots of ways that it like kind of upgrades the experience and makes it more difficult, but also, you know, enhances the, the finished look of the thing. Nice. I was getting confident, and now I'm like, okay, this piece is being stubborn. <laughs> the worst part is when you accidentally cut off part of the piece instead of cutting the piece off of the thing. I am being so paranoid about that right now. <laughs> like, you can't even believe. I feel like this just slot in, but... At least I can gently pull part of this back and be like, what did I do? Okay. C2. Wait a minute. That's not C2. Oh, there we go. Number. Oh, that is it. Aha, that's what I did wrong. Okay. Come on. And then this should clip here. Oh yeah, I was gonna say one other thing too. So on on these ones where you can do the multiple uh, proportions, I forgot uh -huh. on this one, this kit, it actually says on the front that just the SD frame is included. You can buy the other frame. Oh, it's, it's an upsell. CS frame <laughs> separately. Some of these um, cross silhouette kits have both in it and some don't. Um, but yeah, this one doesn't have the other one in it. So like on the instruction sheet, it actually has two paths. So like if you're using this scale, you follow this path. If you're doing this scale, follow this path. Nice. So I forgot about that until I realized I was like, oh wait, oh I can't do that. Never mind. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I wanted to do the other uh, the other scale, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm like I feel like this could be tighter, but it's like you know what. I put in the right slots. It's only going a certain percentage. So I would just live and not live. It's already coming out cute. I got the little head. I like that shiny, shiny gold piece included for the, what do you call that front piece? The horns? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, horns, I don't know if they're antenna or horns, but it doesn't really matter. Whatever. Okay. I mean, a lot of them have it. And I'm like, maybe there's like a fancy term that they use for these. The robot designers. All right. 
Oh, it already wants me to put stickers on it. Now I'm terrified. <laughs> yeah, I had a sticker on mine and a little, a little chest emblem on this one was a sticker. I was like, oh my God, I thought it threw away the stickers, but it was in the bag. I was so worried. Uh, yeah, it's really fine. How you doing, Mage? Let's see. Oh gosh, I'm supposed to put a sticker on mine here too, but I can't even see. It. It's so tiny. I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, they're like super, it. super little tiny. Like, oh my God, my Zoom's working horribly here. Let me see if the clippers will help me zoom. But it's like, follow my clippers. Number seven. Oh, no wonder it's so oh. tiny. It's a little dot. Jeez. That's the getting too old for stickers that small. Right? Well, that's the only issue with the SD ones. It's for like a little <laughs> tiny stickers. I'm like, no. Oh my gosh. Okay um that symbol or is that symbol oh, oh. did I'm you get it? my exacto knife to help me no i almost lost the sticker almost uh. flying <laughs> uh exacto and tweezers can help with decals got it i'm gonna i'm gonna try to do it the hard way fingers crossed okay that one e2 number 21 and it's not like if it doesn't work out that I can't just like dab some paint in there. Right. Yeah. That's I'm like, I have like, green nail polish. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's yeah, the stickers are kind of in place of doing painting. If you want to paint it, you absolutely can, even if it comes with stickers. Like sometimes, like some of the stickers, I'll be like, I like that sticker. I don't want to paint that. And other times I'll be like, eh, I know that sticker is not going to stay well or it's going to rub off. And I am just going to paint it instead. Yeah. Oh, you just call them embellishments, <laughs> Alyssa. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm getting it in there. And it's not like the best job, but at least I know what the color should be in there. And it's like, later, I feel like I can totally pop that out and get a little dropper um, and put like nail polish or a little dab of like acrylic paint or something. So at least like, like you said, they're like your kits. You can customize it the way you want. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of, I remember at um, SoccerCon, um, a lot of crossover um, uh, kits where they would build the Gundam, but then do a paint job that resembled another property. Or oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of it's the same thing with like cosplay, but even like so, this kit is actually originally is like pink and red. Mm -hmm. This one, but like I did my own. Um, I took my favorite band which is jawbreaker and this is their band logo oh cool and so because oh, you said you I, cut that one out that makes sense yeah so these are custom water slide decals i did so this is the band logo and they're called jawbreaker but i made it so it's like his squad or whatever so it's jawbreakers instead of jawbreaker oh, and then cool. like the 504 and the number on the back are both like from songs from the band and then for the pilot name like on the side because they have pilot names on the on the heads of their mechs just like fighter pilots or whatever mm -hmm. i put the name it's the name of the lead singer of the band oh so, my god that text is really tiny yeah it's yeah. good <laughs> transfer probably, a job i don't know i don't know if i can you can actually see it on i can't camera, read but, it but i could see like the jaggedness yeah, it, of that it's definitely something written you can read it in person so yeah so like so yeah so that is all just my own custom paint job based on my band that i like my band, <laughs> the band that i like <clears throat> have you shown it to them um no because when i made like i made this like it's it, this is an old one this is like pre-social media oh. <laughs> um man those things it, hold up then if you had that that long yeah so gosh i got I, now i just felt really old for a second because oh, no. <laughs> no because so the funny thing is that um the band and the album that like i did this off of they're having a 25th anniversary album tour oh god this year and i we actually got tickets to see them in seattle because like they 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 stopped being a band forever ago and they did a reunion tour a couple of like right before the pandemic so like we went and saw them in portland and then this year is the 25th anniversary of that album so they're doing like all the, the they're playing like the whole album and then plus other songs mm -hmm. um but yeah, so that was that was cool, or it will be cool, I should say. Yeah. the The cool thing about 
the one thing I was worried about, like going to a concert is like, okay, what's the venue's policy on like COVID and everything else Mm -hmm. at this place? It's proof of vaccination only. You can't even like no negative test. It has to be proof of vaccination mask wearing the whole time, or you can't even get in. Oh, nice. And I was like, cool. Okay. We're going. Let's see. Yeah, sometimes I look at the pieces in the instructions and I'm like, oh, I can figure out what that piece is without reading the number. And then I slow down like, no, confirm the number. (laughs) (laughs) Let's see. Yeah, somebody in chat, I think was um, uh, Taryn mentioned that um they typically oh no that was um prime typically thought of like modeling as building rockets and boats and i was kind of the same like i know alan said that he grew up with a a lot of like automobile um models and stuff so seeing these it's like oh no it's all models just some of these objects are in awesome uh, sci-fi shows and not a giant tanker ship that you're going to see in the port which I yeah, think is more I, exciting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I so I started when I was a little kid, and there was, um, gosh, I can't remember who who did it, but there was like a, um, like you could, it was like a model building like club thing you could sign up for, mm-hmm. and like they would send you a model kit every month or whatever, and but it was like a Mustang and like a Apache helicopter and like a F fourteen fighter jet. Um, and so for like, that was where I started, but those things never really interested me. I just like building model kits, but I didn't really care about hot rods and military vehicles. Um, and then like, I got into Star War- Star Trek and found that they had like, you could like build model kits of like the Enterprise and Romulan Warbirds. And I was like, now this is cool. Um, <laughs> and like, that was when I, <laughs> I was that was when I first was like this would be really cool to build the models that they use in like the TV shows and movies like that would be my dream job yeah so like doing that had like making props and spaceships for movies has been like my dream job since I was like nine years old oh that's really cool and now you're doing it is that surreal when you look back and you wish you could like tell yourself like guess what's gonna happen yeah I mean like for an actual like movie or show I we I've done it once um and I would love to do it again but uh yeah that was it was it was really surreal um working on that um just because yeah it was more than welcome to shout out the movie you worked on (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah he worked on a movie I'm gonna link it uh it was prospect which is the movie uh which is a sci-fi space western that was the sci-fi space western featuring Pedro Pascal before he was the Mandalorian um and Sophie Thatcher who was in the latest or the two episodes ago of the book of Boba Fett the leader of the biker gang so they both went from our movie to being in the Star Wars I love that there's that one of the reviews that the movie got was actually um I can't because it came out I think right after Solo which didn't do that well and like I love Solo I love okay. Solo too but it you know didn't do that great <laughs> yeah. but like so it was kind of right after that but like one of the reviews was like this is what a Star Wars movie should feel like oh um, which it's was like a, a great review compliment. you're like I like it but you put that it's like a backhanded compliment to Star <laughs> Wars really but but I mean but then and then the thing is, like, the very next Star Wars thing was The Mandalorian, which was a sci-fi space western featuring the same actor. So it was like, maybe they took to heart the reviews of our movie and, like, were like, well, we know Pedro Pascal can wear a helmet for a long time and can be, like, a mercenary who becomes an unwanted father figure. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. They definitely made a leap to Baby Yoda, though. <laughs> I'm also really liking um, the book of Boba Fett. I never finished uh, Mandalorian, but I got oh, right no. into Boba Fett, so don't hate me. No, never. 
though after seeing um her in person like heather's costume is amazing i'm already blank on the name because i'm tired what's her bo katan i'm um, not bo katan um the one you know, the oh, the Fennec one yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. Fennec one looks oh my god now seeing the character in person i'm like that looks really cool it it's funny like one of the things you know uh, and being living with somebody who also does <laughs> makes things for a living um uh, you understand this but like the the desire to like make sure that you're making something match what's on screen and then like the challenge of trying to do it when you don't really have any references um so like for fennec specifically the one piece of her costume that none of the promo shots like she has this uh like a hip pack that she wears and like there's no good reference shot of it because she has she always has like her rifle either over it or her arm over it mm -hmm. and so I kind of had to do it um as best I made that as best I could like from like a couple of different angles and tried to extrapolate and mm -hmm. then in, and then the book of Boba Fett comes out and like you can see it all the time and like just looking at it and going like damn I nailed that without even being able to like see all the references is really really rewarding because that doesn't usually <laughs> usually it's always like oh yeah no I missed that and I had to change this but that one piece I was just like I was like damn it looked like I actually had full reference pictures because I matched it so perfectly oh yeah um prime it's it's like a slow burn it, it's definitely starting to pick up um book of Boba Fett I don't know it's gonna sound weird but I started um at the latest episode and then I had to go back and watch the rest um I had to mentally separate myself from like badass Boba Fett from the original to like a sad dad figure and just trying to figure out after some trauma what he's going to do with his life and now that I've like thought about that as like a drama with like a sad space dad I'm like okay okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think um I think it's definitely slower than a lot of people expected it to be. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm digging it. Um, I think I have some theories about his that he's kind of playing the long game. I hope it's like has, a lot of build up, and when it like hits, people will be like, "Oh, it had to be done this way," you know? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> what helped me a lot, Prime, was reading an interview with the actor and he based a lot of the character on himself like his time with the Tuscans he's like oh yeah that's like my Maori culture some of the fighting we were doing and so I'm wondering like how much he put into it like I wonder if his, his name's tomorrow right I don't want to yeah, confuse that tomorrow Morrison yeah, tomorrow Morrison like I think uh, tomorrow Morrison was like I gotta oh, find the article the but yeah he was like um he had a lot of autonomy into like some of the writing about this character and the tone so after hearing that yeah and especially like knowing like this is boba fett after the sarlacc i'm like okay i can give that a little even though i kind of cringed well i don't want to say anything well obviously we know that he gets his armor back somehow but yeah i'm like i don't want to say spoilers but i want to talk about everything i'll be good <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i forgot about that I should probably stop yeah that's true um i mean yeah not every character has a sad backstory and i feel like i mean at least though i'll say with the boba fett i mean they haven't really gone into the the skywalker stuff right i mean a little no. bit of mandalorian but that was like a tiny little cameo yeah so i do like having some saga stuff like boba fett was just in there for a little book and bit in the movies and it was like the fans had blown out of proportion but there isn't a lot of like side content with people that aren't tied to the skywalkers or aren't like direct descendants or blah, blah, blah. Big robots don't need a tragic backstory. Hey, <laughs> I think doesn't Gundam have so much like drama in it? I remember like oh, Gundam yeah. Wing and Gundam There's Wing was so my drama. stuff growing up. And there was so <laughs> much like teen angst and like teen drama. And I remember like the dude slapping her like blah. And she's like, no, I just slapped him back. Like there was some drama in that show. <laughs> these I pieces the... look identical and at a point i'm just going to commit to this model people i'm like did i put the right piece the right piece and i'm like the feet look the same oh look at that yeah i got little feeties 
You got the, the oh, handsome the arms torso. Arms and the torso, yeah. Yes. I, I do want to like sand and clip things a little bit. I think the only other tool I get will be like a little sanding thing and like clean up the edges. But I can do that a little bit with the clippers. Yeah, I think those ones might not be flat backed because those are just the spare set that I had that I usually oh, use no, for like fine. 3D prints and stuff. But, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, the flat the flat backed ones still aren't, they're, they're still, you can get them for like eight or $9 for like a cheap pair. Mm -hmm. um but yeah they definitely are are help more helpful than just straight up wire cutters because then you don't you kind of save yourself that extra step of having to go back and clean and it up clean some up. after the fact yeah yeah oh my god i just put his feet on and he's so tiny like that's <laughs> his little body and his little feet people i'm like now i'm glad i'm building the small one because i can like store him on my shelf and not take up a lot of real estate so tiny yeah, and even like on these little guys, you can go back in um, and do like a wash or weathering, or um, they even have uh, really fine tip pens that are just for doing like the panel lines to kind of like highlight all the all the panel work. Because um, like those, even just doing that on one of these little kits with a pen and nothing else is kind of like gives you a nice like level up on just how it looks and and how it stands out. Oh, um, nice! Standing on the shelf, looking cool. like the 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 changes to like it, one of the things that's interesting building like for a long time is you see like because you know to a large extent a lot of the pieces it, as far as like the way they look don't change over time like the feet on yours are the same as the feet on mine even though these two kits are you know and even on the bigger ones right the feet are very similar but seeing like the technological advances in the way that the pieces go together and function together mm -hmm. is really cool to watch like over time like for example on like I just this is something I've never seen before on a kit but so the ankle piece on mine I don't know on yours probably snaps over the foot yeah if it even has an ankle piece they don't even well, have so, an ankle piece it's just like little feet I slapped onto the body oh yeah it's just like two pieces well so instead of it being like a red piece and the one white piece they added this extra ankle piece that has this little tiny ball joint that snaps into the base of the foot so that the ankle like armor oh pivots gosh. around the leg. But so like, just like little tiny things like that, it's like, oh, you know what? If we just add this here, then this piece is more poseable all of a sudden. And so like, you get a little bit more dynamic motion in the foot, even in a kit of this size. Jeez. All right, little stickers. We're gonna do this. Eight. Oh, I see. I'm just trying to finagle a sticker around a round part. <laughs> and I know that they scored the edges, but I'm like, mm, still needs a little bit of finessing. Yeah, those are the stickers that I'm like, it, usually if it's something that I am going to keep nice for a while, I'll be like, I'm just going to paint that because yeah. the stickers that have to like fold around edges, even though they have like the little the They little look cutouts, garbage. Because they're metallic they just, and they wrinkle and they look terrible. Like, and they just don't stick around the edges over time. Like they start to peel off and stuff because, you know, their stickers aren't really meant to go around curves and edges. Yeah, I figure like I'm going to put the slap the stickers on, just like hold them there and then like just uh, be fancy and see what nail polish I have or other things. I could just like hold a little bit of color in that spot without making maybe like, yeah. Yeah, that's all, and like you because they aren't that permanent. It's always it's something that you can always go back and like do is like a kind of a later thing, like to again to do kind of like a little bit of an upgrade. Yeah, like you said, like with an exacto, just get in there a little bit and clean it up.
Yeah, I have, I'm doing some of those too right now. So I have these ones that are these little tiny, tiny I can't even see it on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> these little tiny stickers that go on this little thing. And then it has like a little tiny edge that folds over around the other part that's like and a quarter of a millimeter thick. It's like, I know that's not going to stay on there. I'm going to put them on, but that is definitely something <laughs> I'm going to paint later. It's, right? they're so tiny. It's like, I know it's not going to stay there. I'd rather spend an hour painting tiny details than like pray the sticker stays on because I know it's not going to. All right, there's one foot. So yeah, if any of you are building one, you're like, man, am I just awful with these stickers? No, don't feel bad. <laughs> Even the pro is like, eh. <laughs> thank you. No, nah, I don't think it's bad for him to super glue the sticker if you like the sticker, right? I nah. think I don't think there's any rules. No, um, because I've seen tons of. Um, custom just custom anything like people just use these as a foundation and they kind of go to town um, making it theirs and if you need super glue to put the sticker on which i wish i had then you do it well and or if you put the wrong piece on like i just did you can go back and back it up well i didn't put the wrong piece on i skipped a piece ah I, I snapped the piece and then I, I saw a little like hidden box that's like, don't forget to put a sticker before you do that. And I'm like, gosh, dang it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Course corrected. Is it the best? No, but you're a mind little guy. I solve a lot of problems with super glue too, including <laughs> crafting accidents. That I probably fix crafting accidents with super glue. And by accidents, I mean like where I actually like, like medical accidents where I cut myself. Uh, no. Oh, everyone like, does too, because it closes up wounds and it's like a thing. Yeah. I mean, if you like, if you've ever had like a cut that is not quite bad enough for stitches or like they can't do stitches and you go to the emergency room, they have, it's basically super glue, but it's like this tube, they like crack it open because it's like sterile or whatever, but it's just a tube of basically cyan and acrylic glue, just like super glue. And then they, you know, hold your skin together until it dries. And then because it takes so long to actually come off your skin, usually your skin will like patch up the cut while before the glue comes off. What? So yeah, so I like, anytime I hurt myself in the shop, it's like, oh, super glue. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm good. I keep going. Oh yeah, I did. I apparently forgot to put the eyes sticker on because I was oh, not doing no. that instruction piece. Right? Not the eyes. Not the eyes. I'm trying to unsnap the head. I don't want to break it. I'm just like gently trying to finesse it back open. Let me try to get the sticker out. Oh, my only concern with duct tape is that at some point you have to take the duct tape back off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in theory, I guess if you like soak it in water, maybe it'll come off without. I, but I just want to like take it off and then just you're back where you started from because you ripped the <laughs> wound back open again. I think I could sneak in the eyes the old fashioned way by crying and praying. You might be able to like slip it in there. Yeah, I'm like, if I get the majority of it in, then I can use the clippers or like a pencil. I kind to... of push it in there, yeah. Exactly. I like you know exactly what I'm doing. You're like, oh no. I'm like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, so that's because I've had to do that same exact kind of thing before. So I, I feel you. <laughs> but you don't learn until you do it. So that's one of those right, things yeah. like with anything. It's like, I won't make that mistake again. <laughs> just like with, yeah, just like with cosplay, that's, that's always like, you know, whenever anybody's like, what's your one piece of advice? It's like, it's okay to fail yeah, and learn from your mistakes. And it's not even failing, it's learning. To... Like, progress does not happen without failure. Okay.
Oh yeah, when I see people use duct tape in movies for wounds, I just want to cry. Like, no, no. Definitely in a pinch. Like it's better than bleeding to death or something. But uh, it's I'd not be like you. It's sock. not going to be. It's not going to be good long term. Yeah. Your sticker. I don't like you and you don't like me, but we got to work together for the stream. Actually, I have a little wood carving tool I can use. Yes. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. That's actually really good because it's a little bit softer. So you don't have to worry much, as much about ripping or scratching the sticker or messing exactly. anything up. Just trying to push it in. All right, Voltron time. Yay. Time to snap everything together, except for the head. That's why it makes you build all the pieces separately, then put the put all them together except for the head, and then you have to go build the <laughs> So I have my whole body now. Dun, 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 dun. Nice. I was making progress until I made the sticker fail, but <laughs> I'm making progress. Well, the funny thing is, oh, he has a backpack too. I was like, the head has more instructions than any other single body part. I noticed that. Like there was like snap, snap, snap and the head's like, here's 19 things to worry about while you're doing this. Right. It is. It's very satisfying. It's also satisfying to cover up your mistakes. I'm like, yes, nobody will know that but me. <laughs> and chat as my witness, but it's okay. little guy gunpla asmr station just oh yeah clipping clipping things clipping things i almost want to do a wash on him and see how all these little joints pop out all right now i'm gonna turn off my heater i'm like oh my gosh it warms up quick in here I, I had mine on earlier because we have a heater in here too. This is like the coldest room in the house for some reason. <laughs> but like, um, it's the coldest room in the house during the winter and the hottest during the summer. Oh no. But uh, so I had the heater on and then I came in here to do this and I was like, you know what? It's going to get way too hot in here before I finish. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it off before we start. Smart. So many oh. stickers. Jeez. This is crazy. His, he has like a mouth that opens and closes. What? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. oh, I broke it off. No. <laughs> it's not, I just, that was the piece I just snapped on. It, oh, okay, it good, good, good. On. It's okay. I think the next step like kind of holds it in place, but I hadn't got there yet. So I just, it popped right back off. Oh, no. So it's messing around too much. The satisfying snapping noise. Oh, that's sad. Oh, man. Man. Wait, is that supposed to be like that? Here, I'm gonna see if I can make, if you can hear the clipping sound. Oop. Oh, oh, I that heard that. <laughs> that. That flew away. <laughs> oh, that one went down my shirt. I don't know. Oh. Like, I'm gonna stop doing that. I'm just making a mess yeah. and the dog is gonna try <laughs> and eat later. Poor Roland. I just wanna eat all the stuff you dropped and helping. Right, oh gosh, uh, the, never mind. I was going to oh, tell no. a dog story from earlier, but I realized that it's not a, it's it's not a good story for a story. It's not family friendly. <laughs> it is family friendly, but it's just you know dogs doing gross stuff and oh uh, yeah, it might be too much for some people. <laughs> it's almost too much for me. <laughs> I have to ask you after stream. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you later. Oh. Okay. 
Wait, which one do you want? You want four? Okay. I even talked to her like negotiating, like, what do you want now? <laughs> oh, and I used, I know you were doing your eyes. Like a lot of the SD kits have like the like the eyes eyes versus like uh... the, the more realistic eyes. So I went with the more like traditional eyes versus like the anime eye version. Uh... But usually they have like the option to for you to decide which which eye style you want. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah, see now that I have that piece on, now his mouth opens and closes without flying off. That's freaking adorable. <laughs> All right, that's that way. This is this way. I like that I'm putting a blue sticker on a blue piece. Because <laughs> it's two different shades. I mean, like, you know, you gotta... I actually don't know if it's two different shades. It might be. It exactly is. Well, it's like a metallic version of this shade. I'm like, okay. Sorry, sticker. I don't think this is going to happen. Hello. It's another curved sticker Welcome. where it's like. Oh, no. Yeah. I think I made the mistake of having a little oil on my hands from lotion or something because it's like, nope. Oh, they just don't want to stick. Yeah. I'll just ask Alan if he has any nice metallic spray paints later. Can you do a light dusting on this dude? The answer is definitely yes. He has some paint that you could use. Yay. Hey, B, how are you doing? Me and my buddy Will are building Gundams. And here's my little dude so far. Oh, see, the eyes didn't come out horrible. Yay. Oh, no, he looks good. Yeah, I'm going to, like, just give up on that sticker. I know my limits. I know my limits. Isn't it just, like, self-care where you're like, no, I'm not going to stress over that thing that I don't have to stress about? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. <sighs> I hate it when a piece starts to snap and you're like, oh, this is a commitment piece. This is a, you better be ready piece. <laughs> oh gosh. Hello. Hey, how are you doing, Mistress Verse? We're doing good. We're just in like that Zen slash stress mode of building where I'm like, okay. Okay. Oh, it's coming together. Thank goodness. Snap. That's what I like to hear. In a good way. Oh, the good snap. snap. The good snap. Okay. One tiny little arm is done. As I triple check, I put the right ones together. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I better put the right ones on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh. Huh? Let's put that on backwards. But it didn't let me, so that's good. It was it's like no, nope, such it a fit. risk. Hmm. I keep, ha yeah, it was a good snap. Yeah, because in the little arm ones, there's like uh, four different little slots I go together at the same time. So I had to make sure they were lined up right because some of the connectors were looked super, super thin. So I just like kind of held together, positioned it, and prayed. And then it's like, it starts off daunting and then you start making your way through and then you realize just like how many pieces you've already been through. And it's like, oh, we're almost done. And you can get like actual results relatively quickly. Yeah. Especially if you're used to doing other things like, you know, cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> where you have to yeah, work a long be time before you actually find get anything done yeah you know, like months and months and you can only imagine it finally come together and with this one you're like okay one hour and i got a foundation hour or two and i've got it like primed and ready for painting like No, I 
forgot to put another piece on. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's an important piece. Oh That's no. Okay. It's okay. I'm it's going fixable. To... Yeah. I'm like, how do I take these guys apart? Hey, at least I'm showing sure everything that can go wrong. Let's see. All right. Now. Wait to see. Aha. So chat, um, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. I forgot to put a piece on before snapping the piece over it. But I have this, I actually use this to deep pot my makeup palettes, but I have this little like sharp wood carving tool and I'm gently putting it in there to kind of gently pry the pieces apart so I can fix my mistake. So if you start one of these and you feel like you made a mistake, just see what you have lying around, like gently try to disconnect it. Oh, and I think I've got it. And I wish I knew this earlier when I was trying to fix the eyes. You know, that's why oh, yeah, it's coming apart without too much stress. Knock on wood. Gonna rock this back and forth. You know, I'm kind of glad I'm going through all the mistakes so I can, yay, it came off, thank goodness. Now I can also fix the eyes that I was worried about. Eyes. I just had to fix something with my eyes that I messed up too. Jeez. What is it with the eyes? So when I was talking about the two different eye stickers, mm -hmm. that actually goes one on each side. So that the top of the head comes off. So you can switch around which which eyes you want. So you just pull, oh, flip that over. Cool. So you can do the other eyes, and then you put the top of the head on, and then you just pop the top off and switch the eyes around. Oh, no, oh, no, yeah. My thing was I forgot to put his mouth on before putting like his helmet on, oh, so the mouthpiece yeah. didn't fit. So I'm like, okay, now I can snap it on. There we go. So yeah, clearly I forgot the eyes and the mouth part at the same time, but. I gently pried off the face cover. Like it was stuck there. I couldn't pry it off with my hands, but um, I just gently used this tool to fix my mistake. So that was really cool. Yeah, like now I'm kind of glad that um, I'm learning and messing up and getting better at it as I go because now it's definitely like, okay, um, it's, mistakes will happen. It's just like, I had to take a breather because I was like a little mad at myself, but I'm like, you know what? I was able to fix it. It's all good. I'm trying to Let's see where was that setting and I feel like I can like tighten a few spots here but I'm like mm, I think my husband has a tool for that <laughs> I'm not gonna kill myself oh you finished there's my guy he's still well he still has a, a backpack that I have to do that oh my cool. god he's so cute that's the majority of him this is like this crossbones guy he has a little like skull and crossbones on his helmet there's one with a fixed face Yay, I'm building these little arms now. And then he's got like giant shoulder pads. And weapons, of course. You can't forget the weapons. <laughs> oh, does he have a weapon? I even noticed. Like, I just like the little armor pieces. Let's see. They almost <laughs> they almost nice. always have a weapon. <laughs> they almost they almost always have beam sabers, not to be confused with lightsabers, although they look <laughs> exactly the same. Yeah, they the 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 good guys at least. It's kind of funny because it's like the good guys again have the lightsabers, <laughs> and uh, it's not always the case. But a lot a lot of times the the good guys have lightsabers, and then the bad guys have like heat weapons. Like that's actually going back to really? this guy again. So this is this is actually originally a bad guy, um, but this is like this heat axe. It used to, the battery is dead, but it actually has a little tiny battery in here and you push the handle and it lights up the blade here. So it looks like- Wait, it's that like, lights up for real? Yeah. Uh-huh. <gasps> yeah. The, and the mechanism is really like you push the handle in and turn it and it turns the light on and off. But like I said, the battery is dead. Oh, Ooh. oh, oh, I saw a flicker. Oh, there you go. I got it to stay. It's staying Yay! on for a second. I don't know how well you can see that on you camera. You gotta like but... call Heather to dim the lights. <laughs> so cool yeah so there's with it on and then off i didn't know they had light up things with some of these he actually it, the battery for this is dead too but and you can't see in there but his eye is in there oh the little eye God. in the center and that lights up too how um, hard is it to replace the batteries that's really cool 
they make it they make it relatively easy you actually so for the one in the head this whole piece the whole head piece comes off and then you just unscrew it right here Whoa. and put the battery in and then it pops back in there that's um, so cool but yeah and so and the switch is hidden right inside where the chest opens so like you just open the chest which is also where the pilot is so like they open it so you can see the pilot inside there oh my god um, that's cool you can see the little person in him what? So that's so that's a good that's also a good he has plenty idea room of, for snacks and stuff. That is a this is the scale method. of Gundam, oh. is like if they were real, which they have the the quote unquote real one in Japan, um, that they just unveiled. Was it last year? It's like a full size Gundam. I remember seeing a picture of that. That like it doesn't walk around, but like it walks and moves like its arms and stuff like in place and lights up and everything. Oh it gosh. is. Insane. Are you gonna go visit it someday? I would love to. <laughs> Bucket list. Um, yeah, totally. It's like they have like this whole um it has like this whole like scaffolding thing, like it like you would expect like from like a space shuttle launch or something that it like it kind of stands in. Yeah. Um and is like somewhat attached to. But yeah, like it can like kneel and stand up and like wave and like move its fingers and stuff. Crazy. That's ridiculous. Oh my god. Crazy. But yeah, I would love to see that in person one day. Oh my gosh. God, this is so relaxing. I just like don't ha like have a lot of like storage space or like display space. So now I'm like, hey chat, who wants to like let me build Gundams and I give them to you? <laughs> Here's the finished one. I just want to build them. It's like Legos. I love building Legos, but what Legos do you do get really them? dusty. Yeah, exactly. Right? I have like three very small lego kits and that are like four that i've built for myself and i'm like what do i do with these like they're literally just like off to the side of my desk and like taking up space yeah like do. um sam gifted me an x-wing and i love it but after that i'm like i don't really can't see like having more legos it's like i feel like with legos you have to like fully commit to having like legos everywhere or you have like yeah. one awkward lego piece or a set that doesn't <laughs> go with anything else in the house like, like my what? aesthetic is um like video game and prop and cosplay helmets and or video game prop and um like guns or action figures. I love like action figures that come with the um, game editions. But yeah, that's more my jam. Figures that are magically put together. But yeah, so this is different, but I love it. It's super relaxing. Wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, like what I would like to do, because usually like for the most part, like I like building <laughs> Lego sets, but the only part that I really like to keep and put on display are like the figures, because usually I buy the sets that have characters that I like. So like I have like, I got like the Bad Batch set and nice. I have, I, I have like all of the Star Wars Rebels minifigures, but like I don't want like all the ships and stuff. But like, if you try to buy aftermarket, just the minifigures, like some of them are ridiculous. So it's like, well, I don't want to spend a ton of money just so I have a minifigure I want. Mm -hmm. But I also don't want to spend the money to get this big old kit just to get the minifigure. So because then I don't have anywhere to put it when I'm done with it. But when you try to buy a minifigs <clears> individually <throat> at con, those guys charge an arm and a leg just for the minifig. Yeah, oh, I mean, man. like, it. yeah, it, especially if it's a somewhat rare one, some of them are just ridiculous. Sometimes they're not so bad. Like I've paid my kind of my limit is like I'll pay like if it's a character I really want, like I'll go up to like 10 bucks for a minifig because especially if it's on like one where like you can't get the set anymore. Cause it's like I don't want to spend a couple of hundred dollars for the whole kit. Oh, that's I don't fair. want it anyway. But like uh, 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 over ten dollars is I mean, that's already pushing my limit for what I would spend on a minifigure. Yeah, I feel like 10 bucks <laughs> is fair. Or um go to Lego store and like hope it's a keychain and rip the keychain part off <laughs> i remember when we used to do star wars trips to the lego store they were like you can have one keychain and yeah i went to every lego store event after that <laughs> come on shoulder pauldron stay on here's this little jetpack thing it like it like opens and closes so it like <laughs> opens up like that so it also looks like it looks like bones. wrenches it's so cute it's like it's because it's like the skull and crossbone thing so it's like the oh. four but then it and then it also like they're they have like engines on them so basically it's like it because a lot of them 
a lot of stuff takes place in space and on the ground. So like these all close down and turn into like a big booster engine for like extra thrust. Okay, he did have a weapon. You have to guess what it is. Uh, is it a laser sword? <laughs> it might be a laser sword. <laughs> I was like, oh, what's this extra um, thing on here? I, I already built my guy. And I'm like, oh, it's a laser sword. No, it looks like a samurai sword in a sheath. Like, is it supposed to be a laser sword or do they just look like samurai swords? Oh, I think the 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 ones from that line, that, that one is from, they're all kind of like, they're sort of like, uh, like knights instead oh. of, it's kind of like a knight mashup kind of thing. Yeah, let me show the So picture. they actually have like more, um, more traditional looking weapons instead okay. of- like, light sword wait that's not the right piece yeah it's like here's two options you could have the katanas in the holsters or sheaths holsters uh on his back or you could have him uh carry the swords in his hands and look like a badass so because this guy oh, is no, like, like 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 uh taryn i know you're joking but um like like versus it doesn't look like a laser it looks like an actual like little katana so that's why i was asking him oh sorry yeah no. usually uh it's kind of funny none of the ones that i have in here actually have laser swords no, no, they said that <laughs> i like here like the most common items a laser sword and i have no examples of that but because well, like the ones <laughs> all the ones that i have in here are bad guys <laughs> Right, because so, so here, this is this, there's swords. this this kit. So these are what they what they typically look like. But <laughs> okay. sometimes they'll be different colors. But oh, like, that's very. But this kit has two, sword. yeah, yeah, two uh, pink <laughs> laser swords, beam savers. Sorry, beam savers beam is what savers. they're called in the Gundam world. They're beam savers. All right, now let's see the last little pieces. I also only have two pieces left. Nice. I just gonna put his little for his shield. last weapon. Yep, his sheath is on, and then he needs the swords in his hands like a badass, like the picture. Oh, that sword's upside down. Oh no, his shoulder fell off again. I'll find a way to keep that on better. Sorry, dude. So because he's like this, like the skull and crossbones, he's like kind of like a pirate. So like his blaster looks kind of like, oh, you can't really see it because it's all white, but it looks kind of like a flintlock pistol if it were a blaster. Oh, that's cool. And then and then his sword is also, it is a laser sword, but it's it has like a, a little cross guard on his, for his hand, like you would on like, you know, a pirate saber or rapier or something. And then his his beam saber is like, it, because it's white it just looks like a feather but it's it's like it's like you know kylo ren style like extra powered oh my god yeah i love favor. that like feathering yeah, you, like, effect but like with it you can't but with it all white it just looks like he has a big feather but you know whatever <laughs> it's like, i will tickle you to dramatic. death <laughs> hi just, well he's so tiny oh my god yeah i gotta like play with pinging them a little bit i'm so excited Oh, there, there you can see. They're the, so uh, tiny. A little feather. Oh, I mean, that looks so saber. cool. Yeah, he's got like katanas. Like, they make like giant space katanas, apparently. That's so cool. Yeah, I mean, and there's, it's, you know, it's anime, right? So, like, yeah, well, this is, so yeah, so this is kind of what it's supposed to be, what it's supposed to mimic is his is this also a pink oh. beam saber with all the extra energy. But yeah, well, um, let me get the art out again so we can compare the look at that badass and this is me with sticker failure but he still looks cool like we will accept that i'm adding some stuff later i have like a gold sharpie i'm like gold sharpie i'm going to oh, yeah. make you totally. <laughs> earn your rent today see this other kit that i have it has a big sword too but it's just like a regular sword oh that's cool So if you have any suggestions on buying a kit, um, oh my God, I'm going to plug your social deets again. For Twitter, do you want your Billy the Brick or do you want Shonok? Shonok Studios is fine, yeah. Cool. Everything, everything Shonok Studios. We'll get anybody where they want to be. <clears throat> and I'm going to link that. Oh, wait, sweet. Oh, thank you so much, Nightbot. 
you rock. One of the uh, one of the things that like I always um, say to people is like when it comes to like because a lot of times people ask like oh where did you learn how to do this stuff for props or whatever and this this is it because a lot of the skills that go into doing like weathering and some more advanced techniques on these all translate to prop making. So it's kind of funny because there'll be like every once in a while there'll be like, you know, somebody will be like, oh, check out this new technique for doing blah, blah on a prop. And like, you know, it has like 20 million views on TikTok or whatever. And you're like, we were doing that like in the eighties on model kits, man, that's not <laughs> new. <laughs> or when you look like old movie props and stuff, like you said, like people figured out how to do all this stuff. It's just everything old becomes new again and it's kind of exciting like things are coming back well it's uh, yeah and like because I try to like we make tutorial videos and stuff but there's so there are so many things that I've been doing for so long that's like oh everybody knows that I'm not there's no point in telling people that and then someone else will post about it like it's something and if you're like oh my god I'm like I didn't I thought I just thought everybody did it already (laughs) and you don't want to feel like you're being condescending like here's a really simple tip you're like well everybody knows this but no like for beginners like that stuff is gold because then they have to hunt around and nobody wants to mention it because they don't think it's something that needs to be said right yeah yeah, if you're ever questioning if something's like new knowledge or not, ask me because I don't know anything or I forget things very quickly. <laughs> I feel like I absorb too much information and what the pandemic brain's like, you don't need that. You're at home anyway. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I gotta remember crazy. forever though that like paint your Gundams don't rely on the stickers for the round parts. <laughs> oh. Yeah, like now I want to find some kits that more look like action figures because that's like now I know what my collection entails. It's like I, I can't, I don't have to stop building or find new things to build. I just have to find kits that, yeah, fit I mean, my aesthetic. And like, I'm going to show this one again because this one is really cool. When I saw yeah. this, I was like, oh, I totally need to buy this for Heather. But this one, like I said, this is like more like anime style Wonder Woman, but they have a lot of kits that are just, they even have, I mean, they have like monster kits too from like monster movies and they have like, like a werewolf now i want to see like yeah because alan loves werewolves i'm like and he likes models so i'm like wait a second oh, i bet you could find i bet you could find like a wolf man or a werewolf model kit it's gonna blow sure. his mind oh my god um, yeah i looked online and it's like yep <clears throat> oh my god see the chat there's like a gum cloth for everything so your homework tonight is to google your favorite property and gun plot and see if you can find anything loosely related to it that you would in theory like to try out oh this has been really fun yeah i feel like and and, and having that like fatigue after you accomplish something i'm like oh my brain's shutting down like you're done go sleep but i'm like no i must enjoy him (laughs) yeah and it only took like what we probably spent like an hour yeah, I think building. most of it, I think less, but uh, we were like shooting in the breeze. So it was yeah. like, <laughs> so like you can have something completely done and, you know, ready to put on your shelf in an hour or less. And when I'm looking at it, like, I don't want to work on it. Cause I'm like, man, I need so much time to work on this, but y'all saw like, you're just kind of piddling away. And, um, Will, who does these, um, like professionally, by professionally, I mean, like you're a big enthusiast and hobbyist for it. And me, my second kid in several years, like, and I just picked it up and I finished it. And even with mistakes, I was able to like figure out how to fix it along the way and I already like brainstorm, like what's little things I could find around the house to like make it mine. So that was really cool. It is relaxing. I think the most relaxing part is the clipper part because it does this like soft click. And when it yeah. separates the part from the plastic, oh my God, it's like, like clipper ASMR. It's just like clip. And I'm like, oh, it feels so good and because you're terrified to break it and after a while you lose that fear it's just trying not to clip in the wrong spot (laughs) yeah if you and the nice thing is because it's all plastic that works really well with super glue if you do break something you can usually use super glue to fix it (laughs) going back to our earlier conversation like do you see how it's angled oh so like the angle just lets you put it right up against the thing and then go clip and then the piece comes right out no stress like i i like I was worried about jarring it and breaking it, but this is super relaxing. I just can't get over how tiny he is. Cause like, okay, this is a giant box. And then you got this adorable little guy out of it. <laughs> yeah. What's the best part? <laughs> they uh 
if you want a really really easy i just saw this a couple of days ago because i was looking for new kits to see what they had out for um for the modeling room but they have these ones where it's literally it's one piece and it's crazy so it's like it's this you get this thing it's like a piece and like it's all these parts together and like it it has parts it's like a where like the there's certain parts that are like a softer plastic and like you fold it and like snap it together into the robot like origami but with like basically a yeah piece? but it's like it's like a one piece of plastic and it so like don't all clip folds it out. up it no just... it all just folds and snaps together and to make it even cooler it has like it like has two modes. So like you fold it one way and it makes like this robot and you fold it a different way and it makes like a different one. And it's a transformers I, on top of that. That's insane. Right. I saw, I saw that just yesterday, the day before. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so cool. But like, no, then it, uh, it okay. takes away the fun of building it. But like, it was just a cool thing where it was just like, I don't have to do anything except fold it. Right. Now I'm curious, <laughs> like, um, even though these are really intricate, I feel like fans and enthusiasts could technically make their own with all the software out there. Are there like little indie groups that like make <clears> their own <throat> kits and print them? Yeah. So there's actually, there's a Facebook group that I'm in that's what? basic. It, I think it's called 3D Printed Gunpla is the name of the group. But like people will do like, because yeah. people will do custom, like custom parts for existing kits. Um, or, and there, there are people though that have done like, because there are certain, um, there are certain ones where like they made a kit like a really long time ago and you can't get it anymore um or like it's just a really expensive kit and so people have like even made like their completely own design their own kits from scratch um 3d model and printed them and, and put them together yeah, I <clears> and guess, then they'll like, like sell the Google files store. or whatever put them up so you can like build it yourself and that's so cool because I know, like, um, we just got a 3D printer, so I was just thinking, like, yeah. I like commission a guy to replicate something from a movie that no longer existed. And now I'm like, I wonder if it's the same for model figures. Like, people can model anything these days. If they could do something based on a screenshot from a movie, why can't they do something that's already yeah. been done? Or, yeah, just make it themselves so the company doesn't release it. That's crazy. Yeah, or like, you know, like extra weapons. Or I've seen um, somebody actually asked me if I would, for them, like, a lot of the Star Wars Black Series figures and stuff and like the the Marvel Legends figures, which are kind of the same series of toys, but for Marvel versus Star Wars, they recently have started adding like the blaster effects and like jetpack effects where it's like a clear piece that looks like, you know, an explosion or like a laser blast that you can like stick on. And so someone was like, oh, could you like design and print or like, you know, model and print like these little like special effects things that I can snap on my figures on my display, like on my shelf. I was so like everything's modular yeah why not because yeah. <laughs> um, you know the size of the slots and things like on this because right? like, they're all oh, the same print little different weapons for his hands or if right. I want to swap out a piece or something you know like you said get a different frame that's really cool oh, oh my god it's already 8 45 yes oh my god I feel like this is a pretty good stopping point how are you doing yeah I think so I, um, Unless anybody has any questions or anything, I guess we can yeah. we can do like a. We uh, Taryn is like here are some cool people to raid, and I'm gonna put a message. Oh, Why? Yeah, yeah if, I'll give uh, everybody a few little <clears throat> seconds while I put um a little bit about um, uh who are going to try to raid tonight. Oh, I let me give me a second. This is like a Discord message. We're gonna break into two pieces. In case this is helpful to anybody in chat. Uh, 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 uh. Let's see, I so with february black history month is coming up to celebrate and elevate the culture um i am collaborating not me but the person who sent this message with four amazing black streamers um reaper uh, uh ii28 um just lacretta um copa Caxi, and roxal to provide a scholarship opportunity for black women going to the fields of stem digital media and film we are raising $200 for a total of 1000 and we would love your support. So if you want some more information on applying, I just pasted the link in chat. Um, so whatever, yeah, awesome. uh, whatever shout outs you want to do, Will, for yourself or for like any um, Gundam groups that are online or even locally for people who are already in the Pacific Northwest area, get real cons international or national too. So I'm like, whatever you, you think will be great resources for people. 
Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of groups on um, Facebook, but there's uh, there's definitely the a Washington group that's local to Washington. Um, and then we have the Mecca Modeling Room at SakuraCon in April, um, where people can come uh, and get a free kit and hang out and build it and ask questions and get hands-on experience where they don't have to put out any money in advance. Um, and you'll be there for questions. And I will be and there most of the time. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm the Mecca Modeling Coordinator, so I'll be there most of the time, except for I'm taking breaks and things, but yeah. How do you take breaks? You must be available. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> no, self-care, especially like um, if Africon's <laughs> happening during the pandemic too, like yeah, social distance, yeah. take care of your sales. At least model building's kind of like a little introverted in your own bubble. And Yeah, and we have um, more space this year to, to, to require more social distancing too, so. Yeah, or if you want to ultra social distance, you could order an awesome kit online or go to the international district and pick up a kit yep. and make one at home and like will said you can get a crazy one and just like make it a family project depends on how much you love your family or if it ends up being like monopoly and it's a horrible idea <laughs> when stuff starts to go wrong <clears throat> well that's what problem solving for to build strength and characters right. of family right oh, well thank you so much again for yeah this is fun thank you for having out. me yeah and we'll shout out your social media again in chats. So people can find you and okay. Heather because y'all are awesome. And just thank you so much. I know this was like a last minute ask to bring you on. Oh, no, it was good timing. I had nothing today. So planned for tonight. <laughs> so you were lucky. <laughs> thank you so much. We're taking time no out of your schedule to help us. Else, so. Yeah. This cool. is a really nice break today. Like I was really tired before I started. And then I popped on and I saw this little kit ready to build. And I was like suddenly recharged. And look at him. Now I'm ready for the full night with my little defender. Thank you. <laughs> okay, they're getting ready to raid. So we're going to wrap up and have an amazing night. And thank you so much for hanging out with us, chat. And again, um, contact us at Geek Girl Con if you want to get involved with Geek Girl Con or do a panel like this yourself or join us on a panel like this. We're always looking for co panelists. So just let us know and let the Twitch uh, team know what you're interested in. And they'll take care of you. And rambling aside, we are ready to raid. So thank you so much. And I'm going to awkwardly steer the camera until the raid kicks off. <laughs> Bye.